Gods of War. Being a military commander is one of the most intense and important tasks on the battlefield. You are in charge of the lives of other people, and the outcome of the battle depends on your decisions, your leadership, tactical skills, and the ability to lead a huge number of people. Any mistake, illiterate placement of soldiers or delay, very soon can lead to incredible consequences and a huge number of losses. We've combed through 3,000 years of history to uncover the most prominent warlords in world history, whose martial prowess, tactical genius, and influence on warfare have contributed significantly to the creation of the world we live in today. Today we will talk about the nine greatest commanders who went through dozens of battles and did not suffer a single defeat during their great military career. Alexander the Great Great Alexander the Great is the greatest and one of the most famous generals of antiquity, if not of all times. He is often referred to as the god of war because he alone in the history of the world possessed such a brilliant tactical mind that he could adjust and change his tactics even during battles on the front lines. Few generals could fight in the forefront, and even more so during battles, assess the situation and give orders to their soldiers in various ways, as Alexander did. He inherited the throne of Macedonia when he was only 20 years old and spent most of his rather short life conquering most of the then known world. During his conquests, Alexander easily defeated opponents exceeding in combat power and number, coming out of each battle as a winner, while showing brilliant tactical skill. By the age of 32, Alexander conquered Greece and the Balkans, subjugated Asia Minor, Phygia, Lydia, Phoenicia, Syria, Egypt, Parthia, Babylon, Persia, the countries of Central Asia, and Northern India to the Indus River. Alexander brought civilization to backward nations with his sword, built cities, promoted Greek culture, and created the greatest empire the world has ever seen, all the while never losing a single battle in his entire military career. His military talent was admired by Hannibal, Julius Caesar, Napoleon Bonaparte, and many other great generals in history. Publius Cornelius Scipio, African. Scipio is considered one of the most successful Roman generals and politicians during the heyday of ancient Rome. His most notable military achievements came during the Second Punic War, the famous conflict between Rome and Carthage. Scipio is primarily known for his reconnaissance tactics, which were never given sufficient attention in Rome, as well as for being generous to people and never being rude to his soldiers, even those who were at fault or failed in a combat mission. He was adored by both military leaders and ordinary soldiers, and he himself considered himself equal to them. Scipio swept through the Carthaginian territories and then traveled to North Africa, where he defeated the infamous Hannibal Barca at the Battle of Zama and thereby saved Rome. His brilliant triumph earned him the nickname Africanus, African. After victory in one of the greatest wars of Rome, Scipio continued further victorious military campaigns. For the successes and defense of Rome, he was adored by the people. He later entered politics and became the most powerful man in the Roman Republic, eventually retiring to grow grapes in his villa. Having gone through dozens of different battles, Scipio has never been defeated, either in his military or in his political career. Khalid Ibn al-Walid Khalid ibn al-Walid was born into the Quraysh tribe, which initially opposed Muhammad. Having defeated the Muslims in the Battle of Ahud, he himself joined Islam and the Prophet Muhammad, becoming his right hand. He then participated in the Battle of Muta, the first Muslim battle against the Byzantine Empire, where his ferocity led him to be nicknamed the Sword of Allah. After the death of Muhammad, it was Khalid ibn walid who took command of the armies, conquering Central Arabia, Mesopotamia, and defeating the Sasanian Persian army. He also commanded the battle during the capture of Damascus, a key victory over the Byzantine forces. It is believed that in his entire life this commander participated in more than 40 battles and won all of them. Baichi, Butcher General Baichi was a Chinese general of the state of Qin during the Warring States period. It is believed that at least 1 million enemy soldiers were destroyed on his one order during his entire 30-year career, for which he even received the nickname Zentu, Butcher. His brutal massacre of the prisoners of war of one of the seven main ancient Chinese kingdoms of the Warring States period, Zhao, by their three Axoninia three Asgo and Chongping led to the death of 400,000 people. In military terms, he was a true master of ambitious, pincers, and cavalry. However, the Chinese never remembered him as a military genius. They remembered him as a symbol of cruelty. General Bai Qi went through more than 70 battles in which he did not meet a single defeat. However, towards the end of his life, the general had a conflict with the emperor of the Qin kingdom, as he did not want to follow the order and fight in a battle that could not be won. Some sources say he simply couldn't let his military record be tarnished. The emperor became disillusioned with him and sent him a sword so that he would die on his own, as the emperor was very worried that General Bai Qi might join his enemies and become a huge problem for the Qin kingdom, which in the future would unite all of China under its rule. 
Thutmose III, creator of the empire, the sixth pharaoh of the 18th dynasty, Thutmose III ruled Egypt for 54 years, presumably between 1479 BC to 1425 BC. Thutmose III sought to create the largest empire in the history of Egypt and was very successful in this. Under the reign of Thutmose III, the whole of Egypt turned into a powerful world power in which, for the first time in history, a real professional army appeared. During his life, he personally led more than 17 military campaigns, each of which was crowned with success, thanks to his flexible tactical talent. Having conquered all of Nubia, Thutmose III expanded his possessions by more than 3,000 kilometers. For his achievements as a pharaoh, he was buried with honors in the Valley of the Kings and is considered one of the greatest rulers of ancient Egypt. Alexander Suvorov, Generalissimo of the Russian Empire. Alexander Suvorov joined the Russian army at the age of 15 and was a very gifted soldier, so after seven years he received the rank of lieutenant, junior officer, corresponding to the rank of lieutenant, and was transferred from the guard to the Ingerman Land Infantry Regiment. After ten years, he received the rank of colonel for the valor shown in the Seven Years' War. After many decisive victories in this position, he led the Russian troops in two Russo-Turkish wars. For his numerous military achievements, as well as for the capture of Prague, Suvorov received the rank of field marshal. Some time later, Suvorov went on an Italian campaign, which gave him a new title, Generalissimo of the Russian Empire, and then the title of Prince of Italy Count Suvorov from Nikski. During his military career, Alexander Suvorov fought more than 60 battles of varying complexity and scale, while never being defeated, and today he is honored not only by Russia, but also by other countries that were influenced by his military achievements. Fedor Ushikov. Battles took place not only on land, but also at sea, and in this skill, few could compare with the famous naval commander Fyodor Ushikov. Fyodor Ushikov was born into a Russian family of a petty nobleman and became the most famous Russian naval commander of the 18th century. He joined the Russian fleet in 1761, where he showed himself well, and later participated in the Russian-Turkish War, where he proved to be an unconventional and very smart tactician who liked to improvise and bring confusion into the ranks of the enemy, and not follow the standard rules of naval warfare. Battles. He also showed his martial arts during the Second Russo-Turkish War, where he defeated the Turks three times, who always had the advantage, both in ships and in the number of guns. During the War of the Second Coalition against France, Gushikov was promoted to admiral, victoriously completed several battles and strengthened the presence of the Russian fleet in the Mediterranean. Gushikov left command in 1807, having never lost or lost a single ship in the 43 naval battles in which he took part. Lee Sun-sin Lee Sun-sin was born in 1545 and was a Korean naval commander known for his countless victories against Japanese forces attempting to invade Korea during the Indian War. Although he had no prior naval training, he was war-minded and never lost a battle or lost a single ship that was under his command. He fought a total of 23 naval battles against the Japanese in one, although he was usually greatly outnumbered by them. Most of his victories are associated with the invention of Korean turtle ships hung with protective plates and spikes. At the famous Battle of Mayan Gryang, Lee sung sin had to lead the remnants of the Korean fleet, which consisted of 13 ships, to repel a massive Japanese attack, which consisted of 330 ships. As a result, Lee sun -sil very skillfully coped with the task and did not lose a single ship, while the Japanese lost more than 30 ships and retreated in disgrace. Rodrigo Diaz de Vivar El Cid Rodrigo Diaz de Vivar, also known as El Cid, was a Castilian knight and war hero in medieval Spain. Today he is considered a national hero of Spain, as well as various poems, folk tales, and dramas. Known by the Moors as El Cid, meaning leader, and El Campeter by the Christians, meaning conqueror, Many respected Rodrigo Diaz and appreciated both his great military talent and his mastery of sword fighting. He spent his life fighting innumerable opponents from all sides, constantly victorious, including large Muslim armies. With each new victory, he earned himself an impressive reputation. It is known that El Cid never lost a battle, even in close combat, surrounded by numerous opponents, hence his pseudonym, Camp Peter, which means victorious. It is known that Cid Camp Peter even won the battle after his death. When rumors spread that El Cid had been mortally poisoned by an arrow in one of the last battles, the Muslim Moors decided to take revenge on him and laid siege to Valencia, where El Cid lived with his wife Jimena. His wife dressed her dying husband in the famous battle armor, sat down with him on a horse and made a demonstration sortie with all the knights. During this trip, El Cid died in the saddle. However, when the Moors saw the live El Cid on a horse at the head of a huge number of inspired knights, they very quickly abandoned the siege and temporarily abandoned the attack. Soon after this, 
Heman ruled Valencia for another two whole years, but unable to continue to resist, she ordered the soldiers to burn the city and surrender it to the Moors. Valencia will return to the Spaniards only after 125 years, and El Cid will remain an undefeated hero, even after his death.